Ca slash climate action. So you can go there, there's a lot of resources, a lot of information. You can download the town hall kit, but also we want to hear your solutions. We will be feeding the solutions that we hear tonight uh, into that. And at the end of, uh, at the end of um, September, uh, ministers, including myself, uh, are required to provide the recommendations to the Prime Minister of the Premier's but how we're moving forward. Um, so it's very exciting for the working groups, uh, carbon pricing. I think we're actually dividing this tonight. Um, but putting a price on pollution, uh, how do we reduce emissions from different sectors, so buildings, uh, vehicles, oil, you know, um, I have you do the emitters, but, but oil and gas, uh, how do we adapt to the impacts of climate change? We know across the country we're all feeling, we feel the effects of extreme weather. Uh, when we have flooding in, uh, in, in you know, massive flooding, we've seen in Calgary, uh, Prince Edward Island is shrinking by an average of 40% years a year. Of course, we know the north, uh, the Broom Cross is melting, which is having a huge impact on, on, on people's lives there. Uh, and then the last group is uh, for those of you who are, you know, into big solutions, innovation, clean tech, and jobs. Uh, and so we're really interested in your solutions in all of those areas. Uh, big and small solutions are going to be really, really important. Um, and uh, I really don't have much more to say because it's really up to you. This is really your night. This is your opportunity to weigh Our government really believes that it is important that everyone feels part of this process. Uh, we are not going to tackle climate change if it's a bunch of experts sitting in a room coming up with recommendations that they don't have support for. We need to hear from everyone. We need to everyone, you know, we're not, maybe not everyone's going to agree. That's right. We need to have, you know, good debate around this uh, and figure out how do we move forward? How are we part of the solution? How do we build a cleaner future? And I have three kids. Uh, and how do we make sure that they have a, a better world uh, to look forward to? Um, so thank you very much. Uh, we will now, I guess in terms of uh, the process, you are all seated, seated at groups, uh, I think according to your area of interest, although some of you, uh, I don't know, in the end we just had so many people, so you might be just sitting with your friends, that's, that's good too. Um, each of your groups has a facilitator. So could the facilitators all wave? Thank you. You guys are awesome. Any groups not have a facilitator? You don't have a facilitator. Oh, because you raise your hand, you have a facilitator. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you can just like, you can, you can, you can pass it across. Um, so uh, we uh, are going to, for the next 45 minutes, your facilitators are going to guide you through a discussion on your team. I don't want to be too prescriptive on this. If you want to talk about other issues related to climate change that aren't directly related to the theme you're working on, that's fine too. Uh, facilitator will, uh, you should also have a note taker as well. Uh, so you'll have the facilitator and then someone who has legible handwriting properly uh, to, take, uh, to take notes. And then after about 45 minutes, we're gonna ask the rapporteurs uh, and uh, note takers from each group to confer briefly and then uh, give us give us your feedback. Now, unfortunately, we have a lot of groups, so uh, you, you will have to limit it. We'll have to be pretty tight on what are your top level, what are the top level things you can do. But rest assured, we will be we will be collecting all of the all of the notes that you have, all of the suggestions, and they will all be playing into it. But I do want every group to have an opportunity to say a few things about your big ideas or the big opportunities. And, Big challenges, although I have said tell people I'm into solutions. Uh, and um, before we start, though, we're just going to do. I, I was just reminded. Thank you, Caitlin. We're going to do a, just a very quick PowerPoint, and it'll, it'll provide you a little background before we start. All right. Um, so why are we here? Uh, this is getting exciting. Very good. We're seeking your views and ideas uh, from all Canadians, uh, including Indigenous on how to address climate change and promote lean growth in Canada. Uh, we want to get input and ideas and we want to, uh, and we need to act collectively to tackle climate change. So, uh, hopefully there are any climate deniers here. I think climate deniers here. If you want to go to our website, you can just go read it and come back. Uh, so, the scientific evidence is clear. Climate change is real. Uh, it's also one of the greatest challenges of our time, and as I also like to frame it, it's also a, an opportunity. An opportunity.
opportunity to build a better world, a more resilient world, uh, to ensure developing countries aren't going underwater, but also uh, an economic opportunity for Canada. So we know global temperatures have already increased by almost uh, one degree since 1880. Uh, in Canada, we uh, we are warming by double the global average. So that is that is worrying. Uh, in the north, it's even more. And uh, I actually have been very transparent about this. Uh, I understand that we're going to be challenge. Uh, we have a chart when I was, uh, we got all the data, um, and we are, our emissions are not going like this. It's like, it's like I'm a little too hot down. They're going up. Uh, so we have a challenge here. Uh, if you don't actually act on climate change, if you don't work thoughtfully to reduce emissions, lo and behold, they're going to go up. And we didn't do that for 10 years, uh, and we've got a target. As you all know, uh, it's a target based on 2005. So unfortunately, uh, for more than a decade, you know, we haven't really been going in the right direction. So we have a challenge. So we need now to be very positive and optimistic and figure out solutions. So once again, as I said, the Paris Agreement, 194 countries plus Canada, we reached uh, a really amazing agreement to tackle climate change. It is not everything that I will tell you. It was hard fought, and getting every country at the table to agree to take action uh, was a big challenge, but it was amazing, uh, and I have to admit it to the French government, they worked extremely hard to get a successful outcome. And now uh, the goal is to limit global temperatures, uh, the average of global temperatures, to below 2 degrees, and striving to 1.5. So we do have a lot of work to do. Um, we don't have to tell you this. But it's, uh, we are seeing the changes in Canada. It's not just in Canada's north. It's not just you know small island states that are that are literally uh, going underwater. Uh, it's it's all sorts of extreme weather events. Uh, we have we know heat waves. Uh, we know uh, that, that every year for the past I don't know I'm not sure ever ten years it's been over the warmest year year on record. So we're just increasingly getting warmer. Uh, and for those of you who are skating on the canal, we may not be able to stand on. Uh, we have thawing permafrost, early river ice breakup, increased precipitation. It's causing huge heartache to our farmers. Uh, we already, in our budget, we've made very significant investments um, on managing the flooding uh, because this is something we're going to have to do. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to deal with massive flooding that is impacting uh, on people and people's lives. Uh, and, and indigenous people in the Arctic. And as I said, it's not just it's not just the Cost is melting, and that's difficult. Uh, as uh, as Tim uh, reminded me today, uh, their highways are ice highways. That's the only way they can get around. Uh, their country food, uh, with the with the changing temperatures, uh, they're seeing species decrease precipitously. Caribou, other species, that's a huge problem because that's how they eat. Um, food insecurity, as we know, is already a huge issue. In Africa. It's just being Okay, so this is actually a chart I love because I spent all my time thinking of how do we reduce emissions in different buckets. Uh, so you can see here where do our emissions, where do our greenhouse gas emissions come from? Uh, we'll start with oil and gas, 26%. Uh, transportation, 23%. Electricity, 11%. Oh, sorry, buildings, 12%. Electric, electricity, 11%. Other industry, 10%. Agriculture, 10%. And waste and others. So this is really the opportunity. We can do so much better in all of these areas. I mean, if you look at countries around the world, they are now building to active that standard. What active means is you're actually producing energy. Your house is producing energy. And we are, our buildings are very inefficient. Uh, and so there's a huge opportunity there. Norway, you know, Norway is now with electric vehicles. Uh, we could be doing that. We could be moving towards electric vehicles. We can find solutions. We just had a climate agreement with the United States where we agreed that we would reduce methane from oil and gas by 40 to 45 percent. Many of you would think, well, I don't really know about methane other than cows. Uh, but uh, it's a huge issue. And by reducing methane by 40 to 45 percent, that's like taking all of the cars off the road in an Ontario and back. Huge opportunity there. So this is where we need to figure out the solutions. We need to reduce emissions in all of those areas. And there's innovation that's part of that. Uh, there's energy efficiency that's part of it. There's moving to renewables. And there's, so there's all sorts of ways that we can do our part. All right. 
this is uh, this is the target don't like as much. Uh, this is the challenge. Uh, so we need, we are going in the wrong direction in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. We need to go down. Uh, so it's a challenge, but we are we are resilient. We are innovative people, um, and we will be able to do this. But we need to do this acting together. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of this. This is a uh, good slide to see what all the different all the different measures and steps we've taken. Uh, we are working very hard. It's a whole government approach. It starts from the prime minister. This is one of the top priorities for the prime minister, but it's across government. When I sit at the cabinet table, I spend all my time telling uh, my, my colleagues how are you reducing emissions, how are you helping me, uh, and everyone's all in, so that's the good news. We have real opportunities because we're willing to take the action that we need. So as I said, we've got the four working groups, mitigation, clean tech, innovation, and jobs, carbon pricing, adaptation, and resilience, and we're hoping your solutions will, you know, we'll, we'll put your solutions through the working groups. Um, so what's going to happen? Because you probably think, oh gosh, the more consultations than what happens, you just all go home and then, you know, no one pays any attention. That is not the intent. Uh, we, uh, we want your, your contributions are going to play to our approach to climate change. They are going to be recorded. Uh, and as I said, we have like a big database, so we will be submitting all of your, uh, the group's uh, reports to, uh, to the database. Um, they're going to be reviewed by my awesome environment and climate change Canada officials. I don't know if any of them are here today. There's some of them in the body. I see some of them. Wave your hands. Thank you. You're awesome. Um, just don't sleep, I guess. So we get a lot of feedback. Um, and we're going to share them with the different working groups. Uh, and as I said, in October, uh, later this year, the Prime Minister's going to hold the First Minister's meeting with premiers. It's going to take the feedback and recommendations that are going to come uh, from ministers to develop what our plan is. 